At number 17 on the iconic 100 countdown is the Bill Russell 1957 Tops rookie card. And here to, to talk to us about this card is Nate at In Cardboard Veritas from Instagram. Nate, Bill Russell, number 17th overall. How do you feel about that rating? Uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty good. I would love to see it a little bit higher on the list. Um, you know, five or seven places higher would, uh, would certainly be fine with me. It's one of my favorite cards, uh, in basketball and otherwise, um, maybe my favorite basketball card ever made. So I'm a little bit biased on this one, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly glad to see it in the top 20 and, uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's a card that continues to, uh, rise up the list and rise up uh, in terms of people's understanding of its importance and uh, how iconic it is to collecting. So uh, I, I think it's in a good spot. I think it's a tremendous card. Um, you know, it is Bill Russell's only true rookie card. He has uh, really just three mainstream cards that were issued uh, during his playing days, his 57 tops rookie that we're talking about and two cards from the 1961 Fleer that so there's not a lot particularly given the prominence of uh you know someone of, of russell's stature um so you know i think it's a great card super highly collectible card of you know one of the probably top five or so players of all time uh and also a card that's uh that's you know fairly uncommon for for a, a vintage rookie card i think the population on it is PSA population is around 11, 1100 or so. So there's not, not a lot of them out there. Yeah. When you, when you talk about vintage cards um, that have, that are, are recognizable, this card is one of them for basketball that just has to be really close to the top of your list. You know, especially if you're talking about, you know, pre like 1980, it's, it's this card. It's the Alcindor rookie. It's the Mikan. Um, it's the wilt and that's basically the end of the list as far as like the most like the mount rushmore most iconic uh, basketball cards the thing that i really like about the russell that you highlighted there is it's not there's not a lot of these available in any grade these days when one pops up you know there's dozens of people who are watching it because there's a lot of people who would like to just add this card to the list the thing that i love about this card is that not only is it rare, but it's also a card that is very condition sensitive. Um, I've really dived into you know, what makes this card, you know, a, a very high quality, high grade card. And there's so many things that are issues on it. This card is plagued by centering issues. It's plagued by snow, sort of print printing errors in the top half of the card. Um, you know, it's, it's plagued by all sorts of things. And, and obviously because of its age, because it's, you know, what, seven, like 70, close to 70 years old, it's just highly, you know, highly beat up. And there's not very many that are in great shape. There are a few PSA nines in existence, but outside of those very few nines and eights and then in the sevens, you get, you like a, a, a big time collector is pretty thrilled to just get a five or a six of this card. And so, oh, yeah. um, you know, when I think about this one, I think Russell's easily his most iconic card, rare, great. And now that he's gone, I think what happens, Nate, is I think people look at it and they go, oh, that guy won 11 rings, like 11. And yeah. I, I know we just sort of glance over that sometimes, but this isn't like he won almost twice as many championships as Michael Jordan, right? Yeah, and that's right. So and, and as many as the other great players of his day combined or twice as, you know, if you look at Wilt and Jerry West and, um, you know, Oscar, uh, some of the other guys from, from those days, they didn't win a lot of championships in large part because Bill Russell was there standing in their way, but um, it, it was not an easy thing to pull off certainly. And, and he, you know, he stands, stands at the top of all time sports winners for sure. Um, but yeah, to your point about condition sensitivity, that is something that, um, makes collecting, you know, you talked about it, the card being plagued by different issues. And that plaguing is true. And that plaguing also is a huge part of what makes vintage collecting so much fun. You know, it's each card is its own unique piece, right? It's not that we have a population full of nines and tens where they all kind of look the same. The, the thousand or so of these that exist, they're, they're all different. And in large part, they're all really different. The centering, the 
print, the print dots, the snow in the background, you know, and then obviously uh, what these cards have been through over the last uh, 75 years or so, they're, they're all, you know, a, a very different and unique piece. And that's, that's a big part of what I really enjoy about collecting these cards is finding the right one for my collection, you know, in, in the right condition with the right centering, the right registration and all that. So tell me about your copy. Uh, yeah, so I have, uh, I have an SGC five and it's, um, it's a little more off center than I would like, but I am very happy with the, the print, uh, quality, um, very minimal snow, uh, really nice image overall. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with mine. And, you know, one of the things I just love in thinking about that card is, um, you know, it prominently displays Russell playing defense and he's, you know, probably the best defender of all time. It has the white. Celtics uniform with the number six prominently displayed on it. We've all, you know, obviously found out recently that his number is the first to be retired league wide. I think very deservingly so. You know, I think we've heard some people say, well, you know, if we're going to retire Russell's, then why not X, Y, or Z player as well? But I think Russell really stands in a pretty unique spot in terms of what he accomplished both on and off the court. So I, I think that was a very well deserving, um, well deserved. Uh, acknowledgement of what he means to the game is, you know, really an ideal um, teammate, player, and ambassador for the game in a lot of ways. We retire numbers and we put people in the Hall of Fame because we don't want to forget them. And uh, we don't want to forget Russell because of, of the mark that he left, as you perfectly said, both on and off the court. So at number 17, you know, he, he, beat, he bests guys like Joe Montana on his famous rookie card. Jim Brown, famous Charizard rookie card, Derek Jeter, the Michael Jordan star. This is really the area of the list where we get into some cards that are known not only by card collectors, but by anybody who has ever looked at a Beckett or um, you know, who's had any part of sports cards over the course of the last you know, 30, 40 years. And so um, I'm happy to see where it showed one of the greatest basketball cards of all time. Again, that's number 17, the Bill Russell 1957 Topps rookie. Tomorrow, we'll get to number 16 on the iconic 100 countdown. And until next time, happy collecting.